all right so we're going to continue with this uh okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add one more page let's let's work uh let's work with something different okay so one second now change the page layout okay so this is where we work previously okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to add another page okay so here we go so to do, so what i'm going to do we're still going to do the same thing we're going to do louis structures but this time we're going to do a little bit more complicated right so let's start with uh let's say something called sf4 sulfur tetrafluoride at this point i want you to know that fluorine is in group 17 so there is fluorine then there is chlorine, there is bromine, there is iodine, and then there are others next to it. So if you are given something like SF4, but you could be given like SCL4, or you could be given like S, uh, let's say BR4, okay? As long as the second person is from the same group, the shape of the molecule and the electron geometry will all be the same okay it will be the same for example okay let me just digress a little bit okay i'll just digress a little bit for example let's say we know nh3 is trigonal pyramidal phosphorus is also in the same group as nitrogen okay they are in the same group same goes with arsenic is also in the same group so what will happen is their shape will be the same they all will have one lone pair and three bonded pairs okay in fact if we change this to let's say ncl3 or pcl3 or ascl3 again the central atom is the same the shape of the molecule will also be the same so in all of these cases they are all going to be for example you have a central atom and then there will be three bonds coming out so they're all going to be trigonal pyramidal same thing goes with h2o or the next person there hs or the next person there h2 uh, let's say te or h2se they're all in the same group so this guy oxygen sulfur tellurium selenium they're all in the same group so their shape is going to be the same so which means that they are going to be bent so there's going to be a lone pair and they're going to be bent all right so all you have to do is just replace the central atom with something else like for example uh, let's say a so a can be oxygen sulfur tellurium or selenium all right so i hope you understand that okay so let's come back to this again so what we're going to do now is sulfur is in group 16 okay you can look at the periodic table so it has six valence electrons fluorine is in group 17 it has seven valence electrons and there are four of them so in total in total we have mm, 34 valence electrons to dispose 34 all right so 7 times 4 28 28 plus 6 is 34 so what we're going to do is we're going to put sulfur in the middle okay because there's one sulfur and then there are four fluorines so what i'm going to do is i'm going to distribute the fluorines equally on all sides okay then what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a line here draw a line here draw a line here draw a line here each line represents a lone uh, a bonded pair yes so then i'm going to uh, so now is where what we have to do is we have to make make all all peripheral atoms to be octet we want to make all peripheral atoms to be octet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a line here each line represents two electrons another line another line another line another line another one here 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 so by now you will notice that what you have done is you have added how many yellow lines or in this case gold lines or yeah how many lines so six you have added 12 so 12 times 2 is 12 times 2 is 24 and then you also have four white lines so 24 plus four white lines each white line is two electrons so eight okay so okay let me just do this again sorry yeah um, so we have at, we have minus with eight valence electrons which were the white lines and then we're going to minus with we're going to minus with uh, six we're going to minus with another 12 valence electrons which was the yellow lines 
So at the end of this, you end up with uh, 34 minus 8 minus 12. You end up with, I think, two more valence electrons, if I'm not mistaken. Did I do this correctly? 34 minus 12 is 22. 22. I think we end up with four. Let's do this again. Sorry. My mistake. Give me a 28 plus 6 minus 8 minus 12. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Oh, give me a minute. What's happening? Uh, 7 times 4, 28 plus 6, 34. Okay, so we have 34 electrons. This was correct. So each each line here represents 2 electrons. So 2, 4, 6, 8. We minus with 8. So let's say we take 34 minus with 8. Sorry, 34 minus with 8. You left with 26. 26 we, 26 we minus off with 12 something is not right my calculator is giving me all kind of funny numbers okay so so i'm sorry Tot total here we have uh eight electrons right eight so another eight here another eight here and another eight here so eight eight sixteen thirty two right so we minus of 34 we minus of 32 we left with two electrons so okay all right because my calculator i think is a bit wonky all right so we left with two more electrons so what we're going to do is we're going to put the two electrons on the central atom so the extra electrons go onto the central atom so oh now i know where i made a mistake i just realized Okay, so this is not 12, this is 24. Yucks. Okay, that's where my mistake was. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. Let's continue. Okay, so you left with two more electrons, and those two electrons are going to go onto the central atom. Okay, central atom. So this is what you end up having. So you notice by now, this is not scripted. Okay, not scripted. I'm just doing it on the fly. So you will see some mistakes but I'll correct myself. So these are kind of mistakes that you might also end up making so you can correct yourself. Okay, here we go. So currently, this is what we have. This is a Lewis structure. So the central atom has a lone pair and then there are four peripheral atoms. So let's do the first things first. What will be the electron geometry? Now for electron geometry, right, what we're going to do is we are going to assume, we are going to assume that, um, okay, so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put back a green line here so that's easier. Okay. So the line, each line represents two electrons, right? So what we're going to do for electron geometry is we draw sulfur back and then we draw all the lines that are sticking out. One, two, three, four, and now there is five. So an atom which has five lone pairs. Okay, so how will it look like? Let's look at this. Um, six electrons pairs. It says, oh, sorry, I think I moved upwards. mistake again okay here we go six electron pairs okay mm, okay here we have five bonded pairs right so imagine you have five bonded pairs you or you have five lone pairs so the shape is going to be trigonal bipyramidal this is the shape that is going to be trigonal bipyramidal that means uh, in this case in this case just now we have sulfur in the middle here. We have one lone pair, another lone pair, another lone pair, another lone pair, another lone pair. So it's going to be trigonal bipyramidal. So bipyramidal basically means is there's a pyramid at the top like this, right? If you imagine, there's a pyramid upwards and then there's another pyramid at the bottom. So it's called trigonal bipyramidal, okay? Bipyramidal. So that's what it is. Okay, doke. So that's going to be the electron geometry. But then just now you notice, right, out of the five bonds, out of the five bonds, one was a lone pair. Okay, so one was a lone pair. Okay, so one was a lone pair. So the shape is going to end up looking like a seesaw. When you look at the molecule, right, the molecule is going to look like this. This is how the molecule is going to look like. It's going to look like a seesaw. That means you can sit on three sides. This is the fulcrum here. And this is where you sit. One person can sit over here. Another person sits over here. It's like a seesaw. 
this angle is not exactly 180 is a little bit bent it's a little bit bent okay so coming back to this coming back to this um where were we all right so coming back to this so the the electron geometry electron geometry is going to be trigonal trigonal by pyramidal pyramidal okay and then meanwhile the molecular shape okay the molecular shape or the shape of the molecule is going to be c saw it's going to be c saw okay so rest assured if you draw for scl4 or sbr4 it's going to be exactly the same exactly the same so by now you notice that sulfur right if you look at sulfur you look at sulfur just to focus on sulfur right sulfur has two four six eight ten valence electrons it has ten valence electrons if you remember everybody is supposed to have only eight valence electrons that means they're supposed to be octet so that's what we did just now we we made the peripheral atoms octet but you notice now sulfur has ten valence electrons that means sulfur is an expanded octet that means it is more than octet okay expanded is more than octet that's what it is okay let's look at another example so the other example i want to work on is something also to do with sulfur but let's say this time we work with s uh, cl6 now for scl6 it will be the same if you're given sf6 or you're given sf uh sorry what am i saying if you're given uh let's say you're given sbr6 so it's going to be exactly the same okay exactly the same so first thing first what we do is we work out the number of valence electrons six chlorine has seven valence electrons times six oh that's a big number six valence electrons all right so seven times six 42 42 plus six total valence electrons we have to dispose is 48 so what we do now is you put sulfur in the middle uh we draw the six chlorines around it so one chlorine up there one chlorine here one chlorine here one chlorine here one here and one here then what we do is draw one line here we 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 draw one line here so now each line each line represents two electrons right i've drawn how many lines six lines so six lines will be 12 valence electrons okay so now I'm left with 6, I'm left with 36 valence electrons, am I right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, okay, yeah. I'm left with 36 valence electrons. So at this point, what I need to do is I need to make the peripheral atoms octet, okay? Make peripheral atoms octet first. Okay, that's what we need to do. So we add one line here, one line here, one line there, that chlorine becomes octet. We add another chlorine another line here that becomes octet same thing we repeat all over the place we repeat for all the peripheral atoms and then you notice that you have added uh three six nine twelve twelve fifteen eighteen eighteen times two eighteen times two is thirty six you have added thirty six valence electrons which means that you have used up all valence electrons so this is going to be the shape of sulfur hexafluoride so if you look back at this table here okay so you go six right six so the so when you have six six that means you have sulfur in the middle and you have one lone pair two lone pairs three lone pairs four lone pairs five lone pairs six lone pairs it's going to be octahedral but if the lone pairs are then replaced by uh, other molecules as a chlorine in this example so the, what will happen is the molecular geometry and the electron geometry will be exactly the same okay it will be octahedral so oops in both cases it's going to be exactly the same so the electron geometry electron geometry is going to be the same as the molecular geometry or in this case is molecular shape is going to be octahedral it's going to be octahedral again you notice sulfur has more than eight electrons around it so it has two four six eight ten twelve again this is called expanded octet okay it's called expanded octet 
on the same token there are few guys who are who are not expand who are not octet okay they are they are not octet they are not expanded octet they are less than octet okay so they they also do, they have a special rule that means they don't have to be uh, octet so like for example let's say like b e c l 2 or b uh b c l 3 beryllium chloride or beryllium beryllium difluoride or boron uh, trifluoride all of these things are all considered to be less than octet so in the earlier part if you remember i was talking to you about this i said i'll skip this and i'll talk to you about this here so these are all called these are all called incomplete incomplete octet that means they are less than octet so if you try to draw this right beryllium will end up being like this b like this you'll make this octet you'll make this octet and then you'll notice that beryllium himself is not octet it only has four electrons same thing goes with boron if you try to draw bo boron trichloride you will draw something like this this i have one lone pair lone one 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 this is called trigonal planar trigonal planar but you will notice that boron is also not octet it does not have eight electrons around it okay so this is example of incomplete octet so these guys are classic examples of incomplete octet and it is okay all right because they are very small atoms so the universe says it's okay you don't have to be octet it's totally fine okay so so please remember when you draw like this you got to make sure that the make sure the peripheral atoms are to be octet first okay make all peripheral atoms to be octet first all right that's it we watch this video and then i think you should be able to draw the shapes of molecules all right next we'll be talking about bond molecules and polarity so this is going to be a little bit complicated all right